lift our hands and love the Lord together.
that we might all have victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. We're going to be seated for just a moment. Brother, brother, uh, brother Gallo, that's kind of confused. Brother Gene, <laughs> come in and uh, just speak a word to us. And uh, amen. And then his wife's going to come, the tag team with the children. <laughs> They're busy, as you can see. This is their fourth time in church today. Yeah, busy for sure. <laughs> well, we're glad to be here with you guys. It's a pleasure to see you all and to come to my uncle's church. I'll say Brother Gowan, but that always feels weird. He's Bill to me, my Uncle Bill. <laughs> Hopefully I don't get in trouble for that one. Um, so, first of all, I'm blessed tonight to be amongst the people of God. You know, I love how God is always there at the mention of his name. Amen? Earlier today, you know, we were having a, a classic Sunday. Those of you with little kids, how many can relate to your kids running off during church? <laughs> it even happened here when just visiting tonight, so that was fun. <laughs> um, but God still chooses to move during those times, you know. I'm thankful that God's an on-time God. We were having a little bit of a rough day at the start of it with our three-year-old. It's just a busy stage of life, but... God still moved during our service, and I just felt the presence of God this afternoon. It was so sweet, it was so awesome, and you know, I got to see my cousin come, so that was great. It was nice to see you there, Alex. Uh, so I have, I'm going to share a scripture here with you in closing, and then my wife's going to come up and repair the damage. Isaiah 41, verse 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. It's nice to know that God is there no matter what we go through. Amen. Mm -hmm. God bless you all. worship and you can really feel the presence of God and it's just so wonderful to be in his presence and to worship with you all. I'm going to sing a song. Um, you probably know it because I'm sure Brother Gowan sings lots of new stuff and old stuff and everything in between. <laughs> I'm going to sing a song. It's called Gratitude and it's basically just saying, you know, God has done so much for us. He is such a good God. We don't even deserve all the things that he does for us. But he is such a good God and he loves us so much and there's not even anything that we can say except for hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So just worship with me as I sing.
opportunity, Brother Gowan. Uh, don't take it lightly. A few weeks ago, Brother Gowan asked me if I would get up. I conveniently was away that weekend. <laughs> and then there's been a couple other Sunday nights. In the meantime, the stuff has happened and you know, I escaped by the skin of my neck one more time. <laughs> And then we come on Wednesday night, and then Brother Gowan began to preach. And I looked at my wife and I said, oh no. Because I think he was using my notes. <laughs> so I, when I told him that this morning, he told me to tell you I had it first. <laughs> I, don't plan on being a long time at all tonight. Uh, as you all know, I'm fairly short-winded. And if it looks like I'm straining tonight to see, it's because I've got a smaller Bible. I wrecked my car this week, and when I went to clean my stuff out of the car, I meant to grab my Bible that I can actually read out of my car and forgot it while I was getting everything else out of it. 
But if you have your Bible tonight, I'd like to turn to the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 9. And it's not a book that I normally would draw a text from. But there was a verse of scripture a while ago in, in my reading that kind of stuck out to me. And it says, my beloved is like a roe or a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. He looketh forth at the window, showing himself through the lattice. And then if we could go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 12. And it simply says this, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, no, now I know in part, but then I shall know even as also I am known. Amen. And just for a few minutes tonight, I'd like to talk to you on this subject, getting a glimpse through the lattice. Yes. You know, a lot of commentators believe that the book of Solomon, Song of Solomon is an allegory of Jesus, the bridegroom, and the church being the bride. And the verse we, we read speaks of the, the bride talking about her, her beloved. Right. And she begins to describe his actions. You know, he, he, he looks like a deer and he's very agile. And he, he sneaks up to the wall and he gets close. And then he shows himself through the lattice. And you know, lattice in them days was designed as, a, as an airflow. It allowed air in, but help to give a semblance of privacy. And the, the interesting thing about lattice is the farther you stand back away from it, the less you can see. Right. But the closer you get to it, the more you can see. Wow. Mm. And God, right from the beginning of time, wow. has always desired to show his glory. Amen. He's always desired to walk with man. Right. He done it in the garden with Adam and Eve. Mm. And then sin come into the picture. And God had to implement his redemption plan. And because of it, he no longer come down in the cool of the eve to walk with man. Right. Mm. Mm. And then we skip on over to Moses. And Moses, he kept back, God, God, show me your glory. Right. God, I'd like to see your glory. Mm -hmm. And God looked at him and he said, Moses, because the redemption plan hasn't fully been fulfilled, you won't understand if you see my glory in full. Mm -hmm. You can get close and I'll hide you in the rock. Right. And I'll pass by and I'll show you just a little bit. Amen. But you're going to have to start walking a little bit closer mm -hmm. to get to see it. Now this is the part where Brother Gowan kind of started walking through my notes. <laughs> Enoch, the Bible says Enoch was not. He walked with God and was not because God took him. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of wonder if my math is right. I believe that when Enoch was born, Adam was still around. And if I counted right, I think it would be great, 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 great grandfather, you know, seven times removed or, wow. or something like that. But I wonder as a small boy, if Enoch sat on Adam's lap wow. and said, Grampy, what was it like in the garden? Yeah. Mm. What was it like to walk with Jesus? Mm. What was it like to see God's glory? Yeah. Mm. And I wonder if Adam looked at Enoch and said, son, if you ever get the chance. Come on. If you ever get the chance, come on. Walk with him. Yes. Amen. Amen. There's nothing like walking Hallelujah. with him. Hallelujah. Things will be explained if you can walk with him. Come on. That's right. And I wonder if as Enoch began to get older, he began to talk to God. Hmm. And God. I'd like to see your glory. Mm. Mm. God, would it be possible to walk with you? Mm. Mm. God, could you come down today and walk with me? Mm. 
And he kept seeking. And he kept seeking. And the Bible says if you seek, you will find. Yes. If you knock, keep knocking because it will open. Amen. We know that Moses, after a period of time, and it was even after his death, got a glimpse of the true glory of God. Yes. On the Mount of Transfiguration, God showed him yes. just what just what he couldn't show him before. Right. Amen. Mm. Too many times when we try to get close to the lattice to get a, a better picture of who Jesus is, we get so caught up in what's going on around us right. that we fail to see what he's really trying to show us. Yes. We only focus on the lattice and not what we can see through it. The disciples, after Jesus was crucified and was buried, were on the road to Emmaus. And they was walking along and all of a sudden somebody started walking with them. And they began to talk. And all they could seem to focus on was everything that had happened. Right. They got so focused on everything that had taken place in the dark days that they had just been through and the dark hours and the trials that they've been going through that they failed to focus on who was walking with them. Come on. And it wasn't until they stopped and being hospitable, they, they compelled him to stop with him because he would have kept on going. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until he began to break the bread that all of a sudden their eyes were open. Right. Because you see, they had seen that through the lattice before. Mm -hmm. Mary at the tomb was so caught up in everything that was going on in her grief that when he began to talk to her, she supposed that he was just a gardener. Right. But when he called her by name, mm -hmm. she recognized it because she had got close enough for him to call her by name before. Isaiah says, for precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, and it's here a little and there a little. If you keep trying to get closer to the lattice, you keep trying to get a better view, a little bit will be revealed here, and a little bit will be revealed over there, yeah. and the closer you get, the better your vision will be. Amen. When Moses was in the, in the wilderness before he went back to Egypt to help deliver, bring out the, the Israelites, he got close to the burning bush. Mm. And the closer that he got to the supernatural, mm. the more willing he, he was to change. Mm. When you're standing face to face with the glory of God, Come on. Yeah. no divine request is too much. Right. Take my shoes off? Sure, no yes. problem. Yes. Yes. Holiness standards only make sense when you're standing in the glory of a divinely burning bush. Amen. And Job, he said, oh, that I might find him. Right. If, if I knew where he went. Yeah. You see, I got so focused on what was going on around me Come on. that I lost sight of him. I've looked to the right and I don't see him. And I've looked to the left and I don't see him over there. And I've looked up and I've looked down and I don't see him. He's moved on while I was focused on my own. Mm -hmm. But he knows the direction I'm going. Yes, he does. He knows that I'm headed closer to the last. Thank you, Lord. Yes. And in his time, he'll reveal himself. Amen. He'll show me where he is. Yes. And I'll get a closer look. If you come back to the music tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know if this means anything to anybody else. But for the last few months, God's been dealing with me on it. To not get so focused on everything that's going on in my little world. 
that I missed the big picture. Yes. That I missed seeing him. Mm. That I missed seeing his glory. Right. Mm. My heart is moved by the word of God tonight. And all I can say is I just want to get closer to him. I love Jesus with all my heart. I love him. But he wants more of me. And he wants more of you. And isn't that an awesome compliment from God Almighty? That he would want more of me and want more of you. See, we see our imperfections. But what he wants to do is just take us in his arms and wrap us in his perfection. And cover us. And fill us. To overflowing. Until he can move through us. Until nothing is seen through us. But Jesus. Paul wrote to the Corinthians. He said, we used to know Jesus in the flesh. The disciples walked with him. And they sat around the campfire and they laughed and they cried and they shared. And they all slept on the ground. And they traveled by foot. And they were around Jesus. They even knew what he liked to eat. I'm sure he had his favorite foods. They knew that he loved to go visit with Lazarus and Mary and Martha. They knew, they knew things about Jesus that we'll never know. Things that never got written in the word of God. It just stirs up my curiosity to know what they knew about him. I would have loved to have just seen him minister. The look on his face and, and the sound of his voice. And, and just, just the way. He tenderly picked up those children and hugged them and loved them. And, and, the, and, the, and the compassion that poured from his eyes when he looked at that poor rejected leper and said, you know what, I, I'm, I'm not going to wait for you to be healed. I'm going to touch you in your... He touched him. And the thing is that leprosy never transferred from that leper to Jesus. But the health of Jesus flowed. Amen. What a, what a picture of the church today. Uncontaminated by the world, but wherever we go, we just bring healing and health and restoration. I just, I just, you know, it would have been so wonderful to have walked with Jesus. But Paul said, we don't know him after the flesh now. We know him in the spirit. And oh, what a spirit. Amen. I, what I felt here tonight just makes me want to go to heaven. Now, I don't want to go today. <laughs> Even though I've got some loved ones there that I, I dearly love to hug. Amen. My grandmother and others that have gone on to be with the Lord that love God with all their hearts too. I do want to look into their eyes again and see their sweet smiles. I want to be with them. But when I feel God's presence so rich and so deep here, I think, what, what will heaven be like? What's it going to be like? Amen. The Bible says, it goes on to say that we don't, we don't know one another. After, we're not to know one another after the flesh. I think there's a danger when we get so familiar with one another that it actually it actually becomes a lattice. Maybe the lattice is something you just heard, somebody told you. Amen. Sometimes we can just have such a touch of God and then somebody can just speak into our lives and just ruin everything that we've received from God. And it just becomes an obstacle. You don't have to go looking for trouble. It'll look for you. Or maybe you fell flat on your face this week. I don't know. But I'll tell you something. It never altered the mercy of God. Your failure cannot affect God's flow of love towards you. It is so unconditional. And I know we're looking through a glass darkly. No matter how clear I think I see him. And how well I think I know him, it's still obscured by my own filters and my opinions and my ways and my shortcomings stand in the way. But tonight, if God would just lift that veil, if God would just remove that lattice, I believe in the service tonight as we were worshiping, that was beginning to happen. Where we didn't see one another, all we saw was God's goodness and his grace. 
And I believe that God's glory wants to fill this place, Brother Corbin. I believe he wants to fill this place so mightily that like the priests in the Old Testament, the 120 that were lifting up their voice in praise to God, his glory began to fill that place like a cloud until the Bible says they could not stand to minister. They couldn't even stand up. They couldn't see. They couldn't find their way around. All they saw was God. Do you think that's what God wants us to see when we come into the body of Christ? He wants us to see God. Amen. I'll tell you what. He wants, he wants to be the one that shows up and shows up. He's the only one that can save and heal and deliver. Why are our eyes so transfixed, fixed upon the body of Christ when we could behold the head? We could behold Jesus. Oh, they came to Jesus, the, the, um, the Grecians. They said to, to Philip, they said, Philip, we would see Jesus. Philip said, what do you mean? I, I'm his representative. Yeah, but sometimes, Philip, you and the disciples, you become like the lattice. We want to see Jesus. And so, you know, people are coming to us and they're asking questions. How's your church doing? What do you say when they ask, how's your church doing? I'll tell them our church is doing great. God's showing up. God's healing. God's delivering. God's restoring. Amen. You know, when we speak any way that is not uplifting about our church, we're really concealing Jesus from the world. Now, I, I know the church will never be perfect, but let me say this, that God, the God that we serve is, and the God that we represent is, and we're, we're really not in, in, in delivery, we're really just in advertisement. If he doesn't show up, there's no goods gonna flow in this place. But if somehow we could get our act together and just rip back the lattice and all the obstructions, because the world needs to see Jesus. But before the world can see Jesus, we've got to have a revelation of him, saints. We've got to see him in a way that we've never seen him before and fall in love with him all over again. Hallelujah, yes, can we stand together? My heart is hungry for more of you, Jesus. Would you lift your hands with me and close your eyes and just say, Jesus, my heart is hungry for more of you, lover of my soul, my Savior, my baptizer, my healer, my deliverer, my Lord and my God. Would you pull back the veil of my thinking and would you cause me to see you in your glory? I believe that God's going to pour out his power and his glory upon the last day church. Amen. And I want to be right smack dab in the middle of all that God is doing. And I say, God, strip away every thought, every opinion, every way, every action, every habit, every way in me that is not glorifying to you. Strip away the lattice, Lord, and let people see Jesus in my life mm. like never before. Amen. This altar is open as Sister Micah leads in a song. I want us to come. I want us to come with the spirit of repentance, with the spirit of humility, with the hunger for more of God. I'll tell you, if we'll hunger and thirst, the Bible says, we will be filled. God wants to be intimate with you and I. God wants us to be close. But you've got to get in close. If you'll draw near to God, God will draw nigh to you and I.
worship the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're not in a hurry tonight. Oh, Lord. Just to be close. 
Peter and John had been with Jesus. Hallelujah. Let the world know we've been close to you, Lord. sweetness. Let's give him the kind of praise that says, Jesus, next service, please come in abundant fashion, Lord. We want more of this, Lord. We want more of this. God, we don't take this for granted. Just remove the veil, Lord, and let us see you as you are. Let us experience the power of God this week when we pray. Thank you, Lord. Let us feel your presence close, Lord. And let us hear your voice in the morning, Jesus, when we wake up. Let's hear the voice of God starting our day up. Let us hear you say, I love you, child. Let us hear, Lord, your direction. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you for being in the presence of the Lord.